Welcome Tech Brothers Damaru. In this video, we are going to learn about what is shortcut in Microsoft Fabric Lake House. In Microsoft Fabric Lake House, a shortcut allows you to connect external data sources such as Azure Data Lake Storage and Two, One Lake, or other lake houses without copying the data. It provides zero copy access to the external files, faster data onboarding from existing storage. And why we use the shortcuts? To avoid a redundant data duplication, then analyze files stored in ADLS Gen 2 or other sources, enable cross domain or cross tenant access, useful for centralized data governance and distributed analytics. So, here is the method how you will be creating the shortcut for the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 in Fabric. You will be going to the, your, your lake and then uh, go to the get data new shortcut and azure data lake storage gen 2 will be selected from there and you will create a new connection remember that your new format should be in this uh, format you will be having storage account dot dfs uh, right there uh, and uh, then uh, this is example if uh, this is my storage account name uh, then uh, it will be some, look something like uh, this uh, and uh, then we can use authentication uh, kind choose account key or azure ad and then finally we will make the connection and then we can give some name and we start using that. Now common mistakes to avoid do not use Azure resource ID or a URL field such as subscription backslash and all those other resources or items names there. Always use the DFS endpoint dfs.core.windows.net. Ensure the fabric workspace region matches the ADLS account region. And uh, now you are good to go read uh, files from the shortcuts using the Spark, uh, transform and analyze them. The notebooks uh, combine shortcuts uh, data with the lake house and native tables. Uh, so we can go from there and uh, start working. Uh, so here is, uh, I, let's say you are on the home and then you go to the workspace. Uh, and here is your workspace uh, called Sale WS. Uh, I have another sale workspace right there, Armors workspace. I'm not going to use that one. So let's use the uh, sales. Uh, uh, workspace. Uh, here I have uh, two uh, lake houses and uh, one of them is called the Tech Brothers Lake House. Uh, click on that one and uh, here you see two tabs. So you're going to see the tables tab then you're going to see the files tab. Uh, and if you click right here and uh, you can go ahead and create uh, the new shortcut. Uh, let's click right there and uh, create new shortcut and now we have uh, different options. Uh, we have uh, uh, Microsoft One Lake, uh, then we have Amazon S3, Amazon S3 uh, compatible, then Azure uh, Data Lake Storage 2, uh, Dataverse, uh, and then you have uh, GCP uh, Cloud Storage. In my case, uh, I'm going to go for the ADLS uh, Gen 2, and I'm going to say create new connection, and uh, then uh, I have to provide the URL. Uh, in this case, you can see that dfs.corewindows.net, uh, and that's the URL we were looking for. Uh, now I will go to portal.azure.com and here is my storage account. Uh, once I click right there and uh, it has uh, different uh, containers, I'm going to go to the storage. Uh, let me show you uh, data storage containers. And in this uh, container, I have two containers. I'm going to use this uh, Synapse container. Synapse container has many folders uh, and uh, then uh, under the input, I have a sample file sitting there. So let me go back here and uh, then uh, I'm going to go all the way down here in the settings. Uh, Go to the endpoints. Uh, in the endpoints, uh, I'm going to look for the uh, data lake. Uh, let me see right there, data lake storage. Uh, so see right there, I'm looking for that one, and I'm looking for the primary endpoint. Uh, and uh, see right there, that's the dfs.core.windows.net. Uh, I'm going to copy this uh, and come back here. And then I'm going to just paste this uh, link here. And now it is asking me, hey, guess what? Uh, you will be providing. Uh, create a new connection here and then uh, we will provide uh, the connection name. Uh, in this case, uh, it took the same name what uh, we have in the URL, but uh, I'm going to provide a new name. Uh, I'm going to call this one a Synapse uh, uh, Container, okay, uh, shortcut. So this is the same storage I'm using for my Synapse and uh, that's why I'm giving this name. Uh, so you can give any name that you like. And here is uh, your authentication. Uh, method. You can use account key, organization account, uh, shared access signature, service principle or workspace identity. I'm going to use the account key here. Let's go back to our uh, uh, portal and then we go click right there in the security and uh, networking and we have access keys. And here uh, when I'm going to go ahead and uh, show this uh, key, copy this and come back here. And now I'm going to paste the key right there. 
then I'm going to hit a next here and then it should be creating our shortcut. Now you can see that the tech reserves uh, lake house is located in the region east US. Any data source is uh, through this the shortcut will be processed in the same region. And that's fine. We can go ahead and select uh, the different uh, buckets. So from here, uh, if you see that there are two containers I have. Uh, now in this container, if I can select right there, you can also kind of go right here. Maybe go and go input and uh, all those uh, what you want to select, you can. Uh, in my case, I'm going to go on the parent level uh, and then uh, leave this uh, all alone. Uh, now I want to just uh, ignore this one because uh, this one doesn't have really a uh, data that I want to use. Uh, I'm going to hit next here and uh, then uh, um, you will go ahead and say create. Our uh, uh, shortcut is created and you can see right there uh, that's the name of the Synapse container and uh, now you can go ahead and uh, take a look on those folders here. Remember that when I was showing you this uh, storage and I said that uh, I have this uh, containers and under the container I have this uh, input folder. So see right there there is input folder has the files. Same way after creating the container I'm in the lake house and uh, I'm under the files here and under the files uh, when I click right there these are the files of which I have uploaded uh, to the lake house uh, and uh, this is the my shortcut you can see the difference here the icon difference right there. You can click right there and then you're gonna see all the folders uh, under this uh, uh, shortcut uh, and one of them is input uh, right there. So let's say if I want to query the sales data.csv I can go ahead and say load there uh, to the tables and then it's going to load to the table and then create a delta table. Uh, let's do that uh, quickly. So we can say new table and sale data is fine. It is a com comma separated and I'm going to load that. Uh, now it is going to create uh, this uh, table here. If I will refresh uh, we should have table pretty quick. So it is coming right now sales data table should be created very shortly. Our sales data table is ready and I can go ahead and then we can see some properties here or also we can query here. Now if I have not created this table then if I need to query this file I can go ahead and open a new notebook here and once I open a notebook here I will be just dragging the file from that uh, shortcut. Um, let's go to the files here and uh, here is my uh, shortcut. Here is my input folder and uh, now I can simply drag this file here in this cell. Uh, now it is using a uh, PySpark code and you can see that uh, I'm creating a data frame and then uh, displaying a data frame and reading this file uh, that is in the our ADLS uh, Gen 2 and you can uh, see that it is uh, using uh, the shortcut here. Uh, now if I execute this cell it is going to show me all the records from salesdata.csv. So here we go we have a data customer ID first name last name country region and sales and we have read this data from our ADLS gen 2 and that was sitting in the input folder salesdata.csv file and we created a shortcut and then we use the PySpark here in the uh, fabric uh, to query that. Uh, now if uh, I was telling you if I want to go ahead and say guess what uh, I want to uh, use uh, the SQL that's going to throw me error. So let's say if I will select uh, Spark SQL here and then I try to select the data here it's uh, going to tell me like no you cannot use uh, the uh, Spark SQL here. You can e use either PySpark or Spark R. So in this case uh, let's say if I will convert to the Spark R here and uh, then uh, I will drag that file, it is going to read uh, that file for me and then uh, uh, it's going to display the data. So right now we are using a Spark R language here and in the above uh, we have used a PySpark. Finally our uh, Spark jobs has completed and now we can take a look. Here is my data coming from uh, this uh, salesdata.csv that is sitting in the ADLS Gen 2 and I use the shortcut uh, to query that uh, in the lake house. Uh, now if you remember that a few minutes back uh, what I did uh, I loaded this uh, tab data to the table uh, so remember we just click on this one and then uh, we look to the, uh, uh, the this data to the table uh, here. So if I will take you back here for a second uh, and uh, then uh, I will show you right there and uh, we were uh, here uh, in the input uh, and uh, then I created this uh, uh, table uh, in uh, right here. So let me take you back uh, to the our workspace here and uh, we were in uh, here and uh, that's where uh, we were 
the sales data and I clicked right here and loaded to the table and so we can load to the existing table or create a new table and we created this sales data table now if I will go ahead and I want to query that table that's fine I can simply use the SQL analytics endpoint so in this case if I will switch back to the SQL analytics and then we can simply query that table so it is a delta table now we use uh, the uh, the shortcut uh, to load that file to the delta table and now we can use uh, the sql analytics uh, endpoint to query that table but we cannot uh, query uh, the files directly so we have to load that uh, files from the by using the shortcut to the delta tables and then we will be able to use the uh, sql analytics endpoint to query those so let's uh, connect our tech rules uh, and now we have this uh, tables here and uh, now if I will go to sales uh, and here I can query that uh, now we should be all good here once I try to query okay so we go to the tables here and uh, then now we go to the our table here and uh, then that's our data now I'm going to go ahead and query this uh, so now it's executing the query and uh, this uh, sales data table uh, which is in uh, under the tables uh, and you can see that we can uh, see the records uh, so that's the one way if you are creating a shortcut uh, after uh, sh creating the shortcut you can always uh, load the data to the uh, tables uh, so you can always come back here and uh, whenever you want to load go to the uh, uh, container here and uh, then go to the uh, folders and wherever you want to load uh, you can always load to the table uh. so i thank you very much for watching this video please subscribe my channel and i will see you guys in the next video